welcome to MSP lecture series on main group chemistry. Uh, in my last lecture, I began in discussion on the organometallic chemistry of main group elements. So, let me continue from where I had stopped. I was discussing about uh, the Lewis acidic properties of uh, organometallic compounds of especially group 13 elements uh, like uh, tri alkyl aluminum and tri alkyl aryl boron compounds. Uh, here tri alkyl and tri boron compounds are mild Lewis acids. Uh, so, when they react with strong carbonyl reagent that leads to anions of the type Br4 minus that is So, example one can consider sodium salt of tetraphenyl borate. The bulky anion here uh, hydrolyzes very slowly in neutral or basic water and is useful for the preparation of large positive cations. In fact, in uh, coordination chemistry, these large anions are very essential to stabilize and crystallize larger positive ions or larger cations. Uh, if you treat this one with uh, potassium, one can conveniently make the potassium salt as well. This uh, potassium salt of tetraphenyl borate is insoluble used for the gravimetric estimation of potassium in example of the low solubility of large cation and large anion salts in water. Uh, these uh, Lewis acidic boron compounds, argonoboron compounds such as tri aryl boron can also react with catechol So, this kind of compounds also one can anticipate. Organohalogen compounds or organohalo boron compounds are more reactive than simple trialkyl boron compounds. So, let us look into the preparation of uh, this organohalo boron compounds because these compounds are very useful in further derivatization of main group or uh, transition elements. Let us look into the preparation of uh, this organohalo boron compounds. Treatment of uh, BCl3 with uh, trialkyl aluminum leads to the alkyl boron chloride. Of course, this reaction can also be termed as metathesis reaction. Okay. Or one can also go for a redistribution reaction. For example, uh, treatment of BCL3 with trimethyl boron leads to the redistribution. Of course, this reaction has to be carried out in diborane B2H6 it leads to the formation of B M E C L 2. This is redistribution reaction. Okay. Uh, of course, uh, these uh, 
organohaloboron compounds having uh, very reactive BCL bonds can undergo nucleophilic substitution reaction to give a variety of uh, other derivatives. For example, they can react with uh, alcohols and amines and other reagents. Let me give a couple of examples here. So, here uh, 3 B and U C L 2. Or one can also uh, perform this reaction starting from uh, N butyl lithium. So, these are some of the reactions. Once we have some BCL or uh, bond, one can look into a variety of other uh, reagents. Let us look into organo aluminum compounds with less bulky alkyl groups, dimerization occurs, and one of the distinguishing feature of alkyl bridge is the small AL CAL angle, which is 75 degree here. Okay. It is unusual, uh, of course, carbon is tetrahedral. However, the angle is very small because two smaller aluminum uh, ions in their plus 3 state they come very close to each other as a result this angle shrinks to as low as 75 degree. These uh, 3 center 2 electron bonds are very weak and tend to dissociate in the pure liquid which increases with increase in the bulkiness of the alkyl groups. For example, if you use very bulky groups on aluminum, it is possible to stabilize in monomeric state. Uh, some examples I have given here, you can see here 2, 4, 6 uh, trimethylphenyl groups, one can have simple uh, Al R3 in the monomeric form, whereas in case of less bulky groups, it undergoes dimination uh, similar to uh, Al to Cl6. Of course, here one can see uh, the dissociation constant here. Uh, Al2 Ca3 6 when it uh, dissociates into two monomeric species K equals 1.52 into 10 to the power of minus 8, whereas when you have uh, C4 H9 uh, this is 2.3 into 10 to the power of minus 4. Okay. This triphenyl aluminum exists as a dimer with bridging eta 1 phenyl group lying in a plane perpendicular to the line joining the two aluminum atoms. If the two aluminum atoms are like this okay, and essentially the aromatic group is uh, perpendicular to it. This structure is favored partly on steric grounds and uh, partly by supplementation of ALCL, ALCAL bond by electron donation from the phenyl pi orbitals to the aluminum atom. So, tendency for bridging if you look into it, for example, if you look into ALCL3 and ALPH3 and ALME3 or ALET3, the tendency for bridging is more in case of uh, uh, halides and next is phenyl and the least one is for alkyl groups. That means, uh, if you just consider ALCL3, uh, more tendency is there for bridging because chlorine has a lone pair, next one will be ALPH3 and next one will be ALME3. Okay. Here essentially it becomes 3 center 2 electron bond, more electron deficient here pi electron code can be utilized uh, to strengthen the bridging unit uh, or 3 center 2 electron bond and here it is no longer a 3 center 2 electron bond as chlorine is readily giving a pair of electrons that will go to the empty sp3 orbital on aluminum two aluminiums if you assume are in the plane, this is a perpendicular something like this. Uh, with this kind of arrangement, uh, the overlapping of pi cloud with uh, uh, aluminum will be much more efficient, empty sp3 orbit will be more efficient. 
that I have shown here you can see here 2 aluminum. Uh, of course, one has one electron other one has no electron similar to diboron type these two will interact with uh, uh, carbon uh, sp2 of uh, phenyl and then uh, of course, with uh, now this is along the plane uh, and now we have this uh, p orbits that are perpendicular to this one. So, they essentially interact with uh, uh, aluminum orbitals that is uh, one is sp3 with a pair another one is antibonding one. So, an additional interaction between the p pi orbital on carbon and an anti-symmetric combination of aluminum orbital this essentially uh, strengthens the aluminum carbon aluminum bond and hence they are little more stable compared to the analogous alkyl compounds. So, let us look into the synthesis of uh, these uh, aluminum organ aluminum compounds very useful as alkene polymerization catalysts and chemical intermediates and of course, they are expensive carbon reagents for the replacement of halogens from organic groups by metathesis. Mm. Let me give the laboratory synthesis of uh, trimethyl aluminum. Mm. In laboratory synthesis, they react directly dimethyl mercury with uh, aluminum metal. This gives Al2 Me6 plus okay. uh, commercial method involves the treatment of aluminum with uh, methyl chloride. This is laboratory scale preparation. Commercial method. Here aluminum is directly treated with methyl chloride that leads to the formation of initially dichloro tetramethyl dialuminum Al2 Cl4 CH3 4 times. This Al2 Cl4 CH3 4 times when it is reacted with uh, 6 equivalents of sodium. Uh, Al2 CH3 6 times. So, uh, trimethyl aluminum will be formed okay, plus 2 Al 6 NaCl. Of course, uh, these uh, the equations I have not balanced, uh, one should be able to write the balanced equation in this case. Another important method is there for the preparation of ethyl aluminum which finds application in polymerization reactions and in this case the reaction that is used is hydrometallation reaction. For example, uh, aluminum uh, when it is treated with uh, hydrogen gas and ethylene or alkene in Of course, temperature maintained is 110 and the pressure is 100 to 200 at atmosphere. This leads to the formation of Al2, CH2, CH2 or 6 times. This is uh, quite opposite to beta hydrogen elimination reaction. The reaction probably proceeds by the formation of a surface aluminum hydride species that adds across the double bond of the alkene in a hydrometallation reaction. Essentially, it is a hydrogenation reaction in which H2 is broken and sits on aluminum to form aluminum hydrogen bond and then addition of alkene takes place and it is getting hydrogenated uh, leading to the formation of this uh, trialkyl aluminum compound. Okay. And of course, these uh, trialkyl aluminum compounds can undergo reactions with alcohols and amines. Let me write a couple of examples here. If you take uh, 2AlR3, uh, treat this one with uh, 
alcohol Similarly, it can undergo reaction with uh, secondary amine. plus 2 RH will come. You should remember one of this will be a coordinate bond something like this. So, alkyl aluminum compounds are mild Lewis acids and form complexes with uh, ethers, amines and anions. When heated often beta hydrogen elimination is responsible for the decomposition of ethyl and higher alkyl aluminum compounds. Uh, so, tendency towards bridging structure uh, shown here. Okay, so, uh, this is the sequence they follow. So, let us look into Ziegler Nutta polymerization catalysis where aluminum alkyls plays major role. Of course, here you take a, a, a olefin here and uh, metal complex and it undergoes polymerization to give in this fashion. Uh, insertion of aluminum alkyls into olefin was essentially studied by Ziegler. And if you take here a simple uh, ethyl aluminum compound is shown here, when ethylene is added uh, under moderate pressure uh, on heating, it uh, this is the uh, group that keep on adding and then it undergoes oxidation and then we get the corresponding polymer. So, here and of course, here initially uh, this trialkyl aluminum is treated with uh, TiCl4, it gives an insoluble precipitate and to this one on adding ethylene high molecular weight linear polymer is will be obtained. So, so this essentially here uh, it involves both aluminum as well as titanium the sequence of reactions and also the direction of uh, bond breakage and bond formation are shown here in this one. It goes like this. So, these two people Nutta and Ziegler uh, were given Nobel Prize in 1963 for this important discovery. So, uh, TiCl4 on treatment with uh, trimethyl aluminum, it, it initially forms a dimetallic compound of this type involving one chlorine and one methyl bridges and this is an insoluble complex on treatment with ethylene. It adds ethylene to titanium. And then uh, uh, rearrangement takes place and this is moved on to the bridging CH2, CH3 group and then termination by chain transfer happens and eventually we get this polymer and this keep on adding until everything is hydrogenated here. So, let us look into organogallium compounds. Organogallium compounds uh, one method has shown here essentially alkyl lithium compounds are used. So, appropriate alkyl lithium reagents when they are treated with gallium trichloride one can get trialkyl gallium compound. So, this trialkyl gallium compounds are also mild Lewis acid. So, the corresponding metathesis reaction in ether produces the complex of this type. So, ether adduct ok. Similarly, excess of uh, ethyl lithium leads to the salt of this type. Of course, if you take triethyl or trialkyl gallium and if you take another lithium alkyl lithium, it can form a anionic species. Uh, it, it is shown here. For example, you, you take gallium trichloride and treat this one with 4 equivalents. So, what we get is 3 equivalents of lithium chloride plus lithium salt of gallium tetraethyl. Alkyl indium and alkyl thallium compounds may be prepared similar to gallium analogs 
uh, trimethyl indium is monomeric in the gas phase and in the solid the bond lengths indicate the association is very weak. Partial hydrolysis of uh, thallium trimethyl thallium yields the linear uh, dimethyl thallium uh, plus ion which is isoelectronic and isostructural with dimethyl mercury. Both CP indium and CP thallium exist as monomers in the gas phase but are associated in solid solids. So, they display inert pair effect. Uh, CP thallium is useful as a synthetic reagent in argumentative chemistry because it is not as highly reducing as NaCP. So, in wherever NaCP has to be used one can conveniently use uh, CP thallium. Okay. So, this indium compound is shown here, uh, it is uh, uh, tetrameric in the solid state having 3 center 2 electron bonds and this one with benzyl, tribenzyl indium, this is monomeric in nature and this one uh, has a dimeric structure here. So, organo gallium and organo indium compounds can also be made and in fact low coordinated compounds can also be made provided R groups are very bulky. Yeah, species of this type R2 E2 having single bond and R4 E2 with EE bond order of 1.5 can be prepared for both gallium and indium with very bulky R groups like uh, this trimethylsalyl methyl group or 246 triisopropyl group and reduction of this one essentially this gallium compound is accompanied by a shorting of the gallium gallium bond from 250 to 234 picometer. That means a normal gallium gallium single bond distance is 252 and if it changes to 234 it indicates the multiple bond character in this one. So, using even bulkier substituents it is even possible to prepare gallium 1 compound having one coordination like R G A starting from gallium iodide, no structural data are yet available for this monomer I have shown here. So, if you use a sufficiently very bulky uh, groups like this, you should be able to make a alkyl gallium having alkyl to gallium ratio 1 is to 1. So, this one undergoes dimeration and this one on treatment with sodium undergoes reduction to form a gallium gallium double bonded compound. Uh, here gallium gallium distance is 235, this is an indication of the multiple bond character between gallium and gallium. Of course, for more information one can look into this paper appeared in JOGS in 2003. So, this crystallized as dimer but reverts to monomer when dissolved in cyclohexane. There are few more examples of organo gallium compounds. Of course, if you take this uh, uh, mono or aryl gallium dichloride and reduce it with sodium that leads to the formation of a cyclic structure having 2 pi aromatic system here. Uh, and of course, once when you uh, take this uh, trimethylsalyl methyl lithium and treat with gallium bromide, uh, one can make a, a dimeric species of this type. Uh, of course, I have given an example the reaction of uh, this compound uh, with iodine in boiling hexane results in the formation of a compound of this composition along with this composition suggest structure for this compound and state toxin state of gallium in the starting material and product. So, this is an easy product by diving clue from this one as well as this one you should be able to work out. Uh, so, this problem given here. Okay. Uh, so, interest in argumentally compounds of gallium, indium and thallium is mainly because of their potential use as precursors to semiconducting materials such as gallium arsenide and indium phosphide. So, volatile compounds can be used in the growth of thin films by MOCVD. MOCVD is nothing but metal organic chemical vapor deposition or MOVPE, metal organic vapor phase epitaxy techniques. So, precursors include appropriate Lewis base adducts of metal alkyls. Example, if you take methyl gallium adduct of trimethylamine or methyl trimethyl indium adduct of triethyl phosphine, you should see here. So, trimethyl gallium is highly volatile 
and uh, trimethylamine is volatile. Similarly, here trimethyl indium is volatile and triethyl phosphine is volatile. So, uh, preferably volatile compounds should be taken uh, in this uh, metal organic chemical vapor deposition. So, thermal decomposition of gaseous precursors results in the semiconductor 3 and 5 semiconductors uh, which can be deposited in thin films. A, a typical uh, method uh, I have shown here trimethyl gallium okay, uh, at high temperature. So, gaseous trimethyl gallium when it is treated with uh, arsine uh, heated to 1000 to 1150 Kelvin uh, gallium arsenide is formed along with the liberation of only methane here. So, uh, 3, 5 semiconductors derive their name from the old groups 13 and 15 and include aluminum arsenide, aluminum stabide SB and gallium phosphide, gallium arsenide and also uh, antimonide, indium phosphide, INA, indium arsenide and indium antimonide. Of these, uh, gallium arsenide is of the greatest commercial interest. Although silicon is probably the most important commercial semiconductor, a major advantage of gallium arsenide over silicon is, is that the charge carrier mobility is much greater. This makes gallium arsenide suitable for high speed electronic devices. So, another important difference is that gallium arsenide exhibits a fully allowed electronic transition between valence and conduction bands that is it is a direct band gap semiconductor whereas, silicon is an indirect band gap semiconductor. So, one should know the difference between these two. The consequence of difference is that gallium arsenide also other uh, 3 and 5 types are more suited than silicon for use in optoelectronic devices since light is emitted more efficiently. So, this 3, 5 uh, types have important application in light emitting diodes as well, so LEDs. So, let me stop here uh, in my uh, next lecture I will conclude the organometallic chemistry of uh, uh, main group elements. Thank you very much.